right? Introduction to probability. So let's look at the learning objective. So the learning objective is to understand the basic probability. So uh, as I understand that this course, this seminar is about basic probability. So the topic that we will cover uh, this morning is about uh, rules of probability, classical probability, relative frequency, law of probability and some rules of the law of probability, conditional probability, independence event, probability tree diagram and Bayes theorem. So it look like a very a lot of topic to cover but basically is a simple topic. right? So let's look at the introduction. So the probability is a likelihood or chance of something to happen. It right, means that we are measuring the chance of something, some event to happen. We want to know what is the probability of what is the likelihood. So the probability are associated with the situation involve uh, doubt or uncertainty about the outcome. So the probability is used as a tool nowadays allow us to evaluate the reliability of the conclusion about the population when only sample information is available. So, uh, let's look at the proper definition of probability. So, the probability theory is a branch of mathematical studies of behavior of random phenomena and deal with the combination of certain number of measures which are used to measure the frequencies of event in the real world. It is a numerical measure of chance that event to occur. So the probability of event, let's say we have an uh, event that we denote uh, that one event as E. So the probability symbol is P E. Right? So probability of E. So some books, if you notice in uh, some books, they will show uh, the, the symbol probability is P R with the E. Uh, bracket E. E means that the probability of event E. Right? So, before we go to a rule of probability, let's do some revision on uh, set theory. I believe you already know what is a set theory, but we just want to uh, do some revision before we go in detail about the probability. Right? So, set is a group with, uh, with a well-defined criterion of membership. It is a collection of object where the element of a set, which the uh, in object which are the element of a, a set. So, set S. So, so, set, normally the symbol of set is can be any uh, capital letter in alphabetical set. So, uh, it can be A, B, C, until Z. Lah. So, X is an element of S, so we can write the X element of set S. So X can be any number, it's an element, right? So let's say, for example, let's say we have a, a die, so a dice. So we roll a die, so possible number in a die, let's say kita sebut, uh, we can say uh, die, event of die, let's say D, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So, all of these are the element of set D. Right? So, subset, so we're uh, going to be very fast here because we do uh, some revision. Subset uh, is a set, set S is a subset of A if every member of set S is a member of set A. So, let's say uh, we have S equal to, uh, we have two elements, 1 and 2, and if uh, set A, we have uh, 1, 2, 3. So, we can say that S, uh, element in A, also have in S. So, we can say that S is a subset of A. So, the symbol is uh, S subset of A, the symbol is this one, lah. if you can see. So, it's a rotated U, right? So universal set uh, in sample set and uh, sample space. So sample space is a list of all possible outcome in a one experiment. Let's say you want to roll a die. So in a die we have six possible outcome. So sample space for a die is 
one, two, three, four, five, and six. Lah. Uh, so this is what we call a sample space. Sample space means that the all possible list of all possible outcome in one experiment. So another uh, term in set uh, which is a union. So union is uh, two set S and T a set of all element that belong to S or T or both. Means that we're going to combine these two set together. Let's say we have set A. Oops. Set A, we have uh, 1, 2, 1, 3, and 5. And set B, we have 3, 4, 5, and 6. So, A union B, A plus B, means that union means we're going to combine these two set together. Lah. Means A plus B, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? We combine this uh, set element in set A and element in set B. So, this is what we call union. So, there are some uh, asium on union A, union B is also equal to B, union A. So, this is the most common part. Lah, right? There are no difference between A and A, union B and B, union A. Right? So, another one is intersection. So, intersection, the symbol is uh, the reverse U, U turn. Right? So, intersection of two set S and T is a set of all elements that belong to both S and T. Right, so let's say we want to find the intersection of S and T. Uh, A, let's say uh, A, we have 1, 3, 5. B, we have 3, 4, 5, 6. So A intersect B. So we're going to find the same element only, the, the element that belongs to both A and B, so which is 3 and 5. So A uh, intersect B is 3 and 5 only. Right? So, a set can be empty set. So, it can be no element at all. So, let's say A equal to no value, no element in A. So, this is what we call empty set of or null set. So, the symbol of null set can be either this one. Lah. This is a symbol of null set. Lah. So, let's look at the example. Let's say C. Set C, we have 2, 4 and 6. So, we, when we want to find the intersection between A and C, there are no similar element in A and C. So, this is what we call empty set. Lah. There are no intersection. And another term that we need to understand is a complement. So, complement means that, let's say we have a die, a sample space for a die. Let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So let's say uh, A roll a die three times. So one, three, and five. So they, they got one, three, and five. So complement of A means that A prime or AC. Some book will say will note that as AC. Some book will put it as uh, A prime. So this one will represent a complement set. So complement means that an element that not belong in A but we uh, have in sample space. So let's say A prime is equal to 2, 4, and 6. So this is the element that not belong in A, but it has in sample space. So this is a complement uh, set. Lah. So this is an example of Venn diagram. Venn diagram is a pictorial representation of a set where a set represents uh, where set are represented by enclosed area of the plane. Lah. So let's say we have set A, set B, and set C. We can illustrate whether the set A and set B have intersection or not intersection. So another term that we need to understand is a mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive event means that the event that not uh, with there are no intersection at all. So let's say uh, let's say event A, set A and set B, if there are intersection between set A and set B, these two event A and B, is not mutually exclusive event. So if the event is mutually exclusive event, there set A at, and set B, there are no intersection between set A and set B. Right? So A intersect B should be equal to null set. So this is what we call A and B are mutually exclusive event. Right. So there are some uh, law of algebra set. Uh, 
right? So we have Adam Patent Law, Associative Law, Commutative Law, Distribution Law, and Demogal Law. So basically, this is a straightforward uh, law. A union A is equal to A. A intersect A is equal to A. So, a. Right, so you can find this on the uh, statistical books. Right, they they will give you the statistic uh, the algebra set law uh, law of algebra set. Right, then well, the most important law that I want to highlight is the De Morgan law. So the De Morgan law says that when set A union B, and then we want to find the complement of set A union B, so it should be A complement intersect B complement. So this is a one important law in uh, De Morgan law, which is uh, uh, lies in uh, under De Morgan law. Lah. So A intersect B, then we want to find the complement of A intersect B. It should be A complement, union B complement. So this is uh, another type of De Morgan law. Okay, can you, can you uh, mute the participant? All right, thank you very much. So... Uh, Another thing that uh, when we want to do a, com a probability, we need to do some counting, right? So this is some basic uh, thing before we embark to the probability theory. So counting, we have uh, one, uh, I, I'm going to introduce only one uh, counting method, which is a combination. Right? Uh, and there are actually there are a lot of counting method out there, but uh, in probability that we, we will focus on this one, combination. So the combination says that... Um, when we want to choose our object without repetition, right, which is a distinct object, and from n different object, so the and order does not matter, so we can use combination theorem. So which is uh, this is a theorem uh, for combination. So the number of combination of n distinct object taken r at a time is n c r. So means that let's say I have a 30 student in a class, so I want to select five member as a committee, a committee in uh, one committee. Lah. So uh, first rule is I'm going to select without repetition and the uh, object means the people in the class is a distinct object, right? Means uh, different people. So I want to select five out of 30. So I'm going to use combination formula. Lah n factorial divided by r factorial mi multiply with n minus r factorial right so i think uh, enough with the revision can we see right. i think that's all for revision let's look at the rule of probability right so let's look at the rule of probability okay um do you have any question about the revision set theory i think if you have uh, qu a question about a uh, uh, set theory then you can always uh, uh ask me directly lah. i i think i i don't have time to 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 see All right so what is, what are the mat prerequisites should we must uh, we should master before getting into basic probability i think the mat uh, prerequisite only the set theory right other than that is actually a direct mathematics uh, requirement which means a uh, plus and multiplication right so um, the rule of probability there are three basic rule of probability so basically there are three basic rule of probability the first rule is each probability must lies between 0 and 1 right it cannot be the probability of event a let's say probability of event a should lies between 0 and one it, there are no negative value there are no value more than one it should be the value should be lies between zero and one only and means that there are no negative real number lah. right so the sum of the probability right for all simple event in s should be equal to one since the value of probability the highest value of probability is equal to one the total of all probability, let's say probability of a i, where i equal to 1 until n, should be equal to 1. So the highest value of probability should be only equal to 1. Right? 
So this is the second rule of probability. The third rule is of uh, if a1 until an is a finite or infinite sequence of mutually exclusive event, so the each probability value can be and that like is additive in procedure, right? So all the probability and the same sample space can be added. So means that we can get the total value of equal to one. Total value of probability of equal to one. Right, so this is a very basic rule of probability. So, uh, uh, if you stick with the pro rule of probability, I think it should be no problem, right? Basically, we need to understand these two uh, rules, right? So, the number two, uh, rule number two, and rule number three, basically the same thing, right? It's an uh, additive in nature, right? So, now let's look at uh, classical probability. So the classical probability define the probability of event A as the division. So probability of event A as the division of number of outcome in event A and the total number of all possible outcome. So we need to understand in one experiment, one event, let's say you want to roll a die. So we need to know what is, the all, what is all possible outcome in a die. So this is what we call a sample space, right? So sample space, let's say a die, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So six outcome, right? So let's say um, A, A roll a die three times. So he got one, three, and five, right? So this is the number of dice roll, uh, number uh, number of times rolled by A. Uh, this is all possible outcome in a die. So if you want to find what is the probability of A, right? Probability of getting A. So it means that uh, maybe the example is not right, accurate, but we need to understand if A have three uh, three values. So N A equal to sorry. And A equal to 3. This is an S. An S means the all total outcome equal to 6. <laughs> Alright. So, if you want to find the probability of A, so means that you need to... Uh, you need to find number of all, all outcome in A divided by all number of possible outcome in that experiment. So this one should be 3 over 6, which is 0 0.5. So the value of probability in A. Right. Okay. I, I hope you understand the, the, the basic concept of classical probability. This is a, the most basic concept and every time we will employ this formula for any probability event. Right. So let's look at uh, example number one. So let's say there are eight Malaysian, right? Eight Malaysian and ten Indonesian, right? Candidates to be interviewed by ABC Sendiran Bahad for six available position, job position lah. So what is the probability of selecting three Indonesian and three Malaysian? for that position. So now let's look at the uh, available data. So we have 8 Malaysian and 10 Indonesian. So the total of this value is 18. So we have 18 candidates. Right? So 18 candidates then we want to we want to fill in six position. Six position out of 18. So what we want to do now is we want to find what is the probability of selecting three Malaysian and three Indonesian? So, back to the basic uh, formula of probability. Right? Basic formula of probability says that we want to find probability of event A, we need to find the number in A, number of outcome in A, divided by number of all possible outcome. Right? Remember, the counting rule today, right? So if you want to find, let's say, n 3m and 3i divided by ns. 
So this is the basic rule. So if you want to find the number of uh, three Malaysian and uh, three Indonesian, so we're going to use a rule of uh, com combination rule. So we're going from eight candid Malaysian candidate, we want to choose three candidates. So in mathematics, n will will give a uh, will meaning will give the meaning of multiply. Right, n is multiply or will be giving me meaning of uh, plus. So uh, multiply with 10 Indonesian, we're going to choose 3 out of 10. So this is number of outcome, 3 Malaysian and 3 Indonesian. So divide by the possible outcome, all possible outcome. The combination of these two, we have 18 PIP candidates. We're going to choose 6 out of 18. Right, so this is the formula of uh, number of all possible outcome. So this one should be equal to 80 divided by 221 should be equal to 0 0.36199. So this is a probability of selecting 3 Malaysian and 3 Indonesian. So I hope you understand uh, wow, how and where to use the classical probability uh, formula. Right, let's look at the second example. You can screenshot well, uh, or if you want my slide, uh, if you want my slide, you can always go to my website. Let's say I'm going to give you my link, the link. Wait, uh, uh, right. So this is oh. I'm going to put it on chat. Where is that? You can download there, right? This is the slide, huh? You can download the slide, right? Maybe you can download the, the starting with the HTTP, eh? right? Okay. So now let's look at example number two. So same procedure, right? There are four autistic children, right? And five hyperactive children. So at ABC Hospital. Lah. So the, we want to find the probability that uh, four children to be selected in clinical study where two are autistic children and two are hyperactive children. Right? So now the same concept. First, we want to find probability of 2A and 2H. Two autistic and two hyperactive. So we have four autistic and five H, five hyperactive. So this one will lead us to nine children. We want to select four out of nine. Right? We want to select four out of nine. So this one should be uh, four autistic children. We want to select two and multiply. 5 hyperactive children, we want to select 2. Divide by all possible outcome, where we have 9 children, we want to select 4 out of 9. So this one will lead us to 10 over 21, which is equal to 0 0.476190. Right, basically, in probability, we're going, to, we're going to select only 4 decimal points. Lah. So it's going to be four seven six two, right? Okay. Uh, number two, at least one hyperactive children to be selected. So at least means that either one or two hyperactive or three hyperactive children or four hyperactive children. So let me use another color. So let's say probability of at least one hyperactive it means that probability of one hyperactive and three autistic or probability of two hyperactive and two autistic or probability of three hyperactive and one autistic or 
probability of 4 hyperactive and 0 autistic. So it means that we are going to limit until 4, okay? We want to select only 4. So the same procedure will be applied. So this one should be 5 choose 1, multiply with 4 choose 3, right? This is the first one. In, in mathematics, n will represent multiply or will represent plus, right? And then this one should be, this one you, we put into a nominator, right? 5 choose 2, multiply with 4 choose 3, sorry, uh, 2, right? Plus 5 choose 3, multiply with 4 choose 1, plus 5 choose 4, multiply with 4 choose 0. So this is a nominator, right? For denominator, we're going to take all possible outcome, which is 9 choose 4. So this one will lead you to 125 point and uh, divide by 126, which is um, 0 0.992021. Two I think you need to recheck by uh, recheck again my calculation. I think sometimes I make a mistake, right? Oh, I'm not sure about that. <coughs> okay. So uh, can you, uh, you should recheck really check and uh, check again about the calculation. I think sometimes I make a mistake uh, on the uh, calculation. But the theory, I think this is the correct one. Right? Okay. So I think the example number three should be the same thing. Right? The same thing right? Uh, on based on example number one and example number two. Right? So let's look at the relative frequency concept of probability, right? So uh, before we go to relative concept of the probability, do you have any questions so far? Do you have any questions so far? Silakan kalau ada yang punya pertanyaan ya. Ada question? Pas, ada yang mau tanya? Okay, if you have any question, then you can stop me anywhere, right? So, let's look at a relative frequency concept of probability. Basically, it's the same concept, but we apply in the frequency table, right? So, the frequency, relative frequency is the, uh, the probability of event happening is determined by observing what fraction. So, we are observing the fraction of the time that the similar happen in the past. So it means that in uh, frequency table, we are looking into the past data. So if, if an experiment can result in any one of n different uh, equally likely outcome, in and if exactly n of this outcome correspond to event A, so the relative frequency is defined as, let's say we want to find probability of A, and the number of times event occur in the past divided by the total number of observations. So it's the same concept, right? So this is the number of n a, and this is the total number of all possible outcome. And look at the question. So we have some questions, sir, uh, from Farhan. What are the math prerequisites we should master before getting into? Oh, this one I think I already answered before, again. So, uh, you just need to understand uh, some basic theory on set theory, uh, uh, on set, right? Uh, with the union set, uh, intersection, complement, right? Uh, De Morgan law, and so on. Lah. So, that one very basic, I think. So, now let's look at example number four, which is uh, re related to the frequency uh, and probability, right? So now, consider this situation uh, in telco call center. So we have number of abandoned call, number of call. So basically, we going to in frequency table, we're going to stop at these two columns, number of uh, abandoned call and number of call. So this is going to be your X and this is going to be your frequency. Right? So number of, uh, zero number of abandoned call is 1,700. So to get the the full list so we're going to get the total of number of calls out of 2000 100 1700 
uh, zero abandoned call. No call have been abandoned. So we want to find the probability. So 1,700, which is uh, zero call, uh, zero abandoned, will be divided into 2,000 uh, total, the total number of calls. Right, so it will be resulting 0 0.85. So this is a relative frequency or what we call as probability of x. Lah. So this is a probability of x or the another name in a frequency table we call it as a relative frequency. So the same procedure goes to when the number x equal to 1 means that uh, number of variant call equal to 1. 120 calls have been, have been uh, abandoned. So divide by 2000 which is a total number which is equal to 0 0.06 and if you notice the total of all this uh, frequency relative frequency should equal to 1 it follows the second rule of probability means that the total number of probability should be equal to 1 so Let's say uh, we want to find number of call, uh, probability that no call has been abandoned. So this one should be uh, 0 0.85. Lah. So we just take this frequency, relative frequency. So let's say there are two or three calls have been abandoned. So probability of two or, or in mathematics we call as plus probability of three. So probability of with Two call abandoned is 0 0.04 plus 0 0.02, so which is equal to 0 0.06. Very simple. For relative frequency, it's very simple. We just look at the number in the, uh, the uh, frequency table. So this is what we call a frequency table. What uh, what if we have a two by two frequency table or cross tabulation table? like this right let's say example number five the table summarize result of all driving tests taken at bootstrap test center right in june 2022 so uh so we have male and female this is a total of male and female right uh, and the total of male and uh, both candidate we have 100 100 candidates Right, and then we have, of course, when we're taking a test, there will be pass and fail. Right, the number of pass is 75, number of fail is 25. The total should be equal to 100, both sides. Total pass and fail should be 100, total male and female also 100. So, let's say a person is chosen at random from those uh, who took their test last week. Find the probability that person pass the driving test so probability of pass the driving test let's say i change the color All right so pass the driving test the total is 75 right this is a total 75 so probability of pass should be equal to 75 divided by the total number of outcome which is 100 so equal to 0 0.75 okay uh, very simple right so now let's look at female who fail the her driving test female this one right and fail driving test right so this is the outcome lah, the numbers right which is 15 so Female and intersect fail. Right? This is a probability that we want to find. So this one should be 15 divided by 100. So which is equal to 0 0.15. Right? So this is a direct uh, calculation. The same goes to the C, male and he did not pass the uh, test which is probability of male and fail right you should equal to 10 over 100 so it should equal 0 0.10 right i think this one should be very easy right for you to to learn and understand the basic concept of probability 
right? And again, I just want to emphasize the probability of event A. What we do is we take the number of uh, outcome in A, we divide by total number of all possible outcome. That is the basic concept. So now, are you okay? Right? I hope you're okay. Oh, I think I'll look at the question. So, do we find relative frequency of a call if the question didn't us uh, didn't give us the relative frequency? So, if we want to find the probability, usually we con uh, we construct a relative frequency lah. So, relative frequency is very simple to construct. We just uh, take the value divided by the total value, right? So. I think uh, most of, uh, if you are conducting uh, using Excel, it's very easy to calculate uh, relative frequency. Just uh, put a absolute reference, uh, uh, 1700 divided by the total number. All right. So, uh, let's move to the next uh, part, which is, I think this is a kind of heavy part uh, on basic statistic uh, basic probability so let's look at the rule in probability so assume that you already understand the basic concept means basic concept is probability of event a equal to number in event a number of outcome in event a divided by total number of all possible outcome that is the basic concept now let's look at the rule we have additive rule or addition rule so, in addition rule, can be divided into two part, but it's basically uh, just one rule, lah, right? This is a uh, special, lah. I think uh, if you don't want to remember the second rule, you always can remember the first one, lah. Probability of A or B, in mathematics, as I said again, or will represent plus or union, right? A or B is equal to probability of A union B, right? So, probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability B minus probability of A intersect B. Right? So, if I can put in a pictorial representation Venn diagram. So, let's say probability of A, this is event A, this is event B. So, we just want to find this area. Right? So, this is the the union part. So, provided A and B are not mutually exclusive. This rule can be applied when if A and B is not mutual, uh, mutually oops, exclusive. So, means that there are uh, the probability of uh, the, 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 the intersection between A and B are, uh, is not equal to zero, right? So, if A and B are mutually exclusive, means that the, the value here is going to be zero, right? So, probability of A union B equal to probability of A plus probability B only, right? Because uh, this part is going to already become zero, right? If the A and B mutually exclusive event. Right. Uh, as I said, you just you just need to understand the first rule. The second rule is just an uh, addition. Yeah. Uh, so this is a value a rule of addition. Let's look at the second rule. The second rule says that rule of multiplication. So there are two parts here. If A and B are independent event, independent event means that Probability of A intersect B, probability of A and B is equal to probability of A intersect B, equal to probability of A multiply with probability B. Right? So the keyword rule N, the, the, the for multiplication is N, for addition is OR. So if we have another rule which is dependent event, another condi condition, uh, this one we're going to look. Uh, later on conditional probability. So, I'm going to explain about uh, the given part. So, A intersect B is equal to probability of B multiplied with probability of A given B. Right? 
or priority, uh, a probability of a intersect b is also equal to probability of a multiplied probability of b given a right so you can see here the different right so the second part i will explain later right, this is the first part this is the second part but we need to understand the first part right for independent event a and b are independent probability of a intersect b is equal to probability a multiplied with probability b Right. Another rule, which is a complement rule, right? As I said just now in the revision of set theory, if you uh, remember, so set the a complement is the element in is that not belong to set A, but we have in set uh, simple space. So as we can relate it to the rule, second rule of probability, uh, the total number of all probability should be equal to one. So if you want to find the complement of A, which is A prime or AC, right, the sum book will put it as AC. This will represent a complement, right? So uh, it's it meaning the same thing, right? Just uh, the, the, ch the change of the symbol. Right, so we need to uh, minus with 1. So 1 minus probability of A, so you, you will get probability of A complement. So because the total number of probability is equal to 1. This is the second rule of probability. Right? So now, uh, I hope you can understand the rule. We are going to look into example. Right? So, let's look at this example. Example number 6. So, in a survey, 15% uh, of the participants says that they have never bought a laptop or tablet PC. 15% never bought a laptop or tablet PC. 73% had bought laptop had bought laptop and 49% had bought tablet PC. So we want to find the probability that a person chosen at random for, from those who are taking part in the survey had bought laptop and tablet PC. So remember the word today and Right, we have n. So let's say laptop we put it as L and tablet PC we noted as T. So pro a probability of L union, uh, sorry, this is um, uh, wait, this is n, right? N T. Okay, so now. To find this, right, we have probability of um, laptop. Uh, this is the first one, eh? laptop or or PC or tablet. Never bought, so they tak pernah they never buy uh, bought the laptop or PC a uh, tablet is equal to zero point one five, right? So, uh, then this one we have probability of L equal to 0 0.73. And we have probability of T equal to 0 0.49. Right? So, we want to find probability of A, uh, uh, L intersect T. So, which is uh, both laptop and tablet. So, now, what information do we have here? So we have this one, probability of never bought laptop or PC, which is equal to 0 0.15. If bought laptop or tablet is equal to the complement, right? The complement is just 0 0.15 equal to 0 0.85, right? So now to find this value, we make use this formula, this information. So we have probability of L union T equal to probability of L plus probability of T minus probability of L intersect T. Notice that we have this value, probability of L, probability of T, and we also have probability of L union T. Right? So now, 
to find this value, we just plug in the plug in the value 0 0.85 equal to 0 0.7373 and tablet is 0 0.49 minus probability of L intersect T. So when you do a multiple uh, manipulation, so it become let me make it this one. So it become a uh, negative P L intersect T equal to 0 0.85 minus 0 0.73 minus 0 0.49. So I, if you can see, I, I pick up these two value, put over on the right hand side and left negative P L intersect T. So this one should be equal to negative 0 0.37 so negative probability of L intersect T so probability of L intersect T should be equal to 0 0.37 right so we already solved for this one and this one okay boleh can you understand so you just need to do some algebra manipulation right so and the last one headboard laptop only so uh, let me use another color. Let's see. So probability of L. So we have uh, probability of L. So, um, uh, if you understand the the situation, the whole situation. Let's say we put into a pictorial design. Let's say this is a Venn diagram. So let's say we have two set L and T. Right. So the whole set here. The whole thing, let's say I use uh, one color, uh, this color. The whole set here, let me color this one. Probability of laptop, right? So this one would be represent 0. Uh, 0. 0.73. 0. 0.73. And another one, another side, let's say I'm using this color. So probability of tablet. So the whole circle here would represent 0 0.49. If you can see, there are intersection between laptop and tablet so this area here is the person who bought laptop and tablet so what we want to find is we want to find the blue area which is only bought a laptop right so to find this area this one should be right probability of l minus probability of l intersect t where this one is L intersect T, right? So we just plug in the value. Probability of L is 0 0.73 minus probability of L intersect T is 0 0.37. So this one should be equal to 0 0.34, right? So I hope you can relate the, the, the question into the Venn diagram. Whenever you start with the calculation always go back to the Venn diagram to illustrate the the probability and can understand the situation All right okay so let's look at uh, I think uh, can I ask Dr. Harina how much how many time left that we uh, I have So I think we, we start a bit late, right? So can I get uh, what is the remaining time that do I have?
10 more minutes or maybe we uh, end with the exact time lah no uh, additional time okay never mind so i think uh, example number 7 is also same uh, method with example number 6 the same goes to example number 8 let's look at the conditional probability so as i said just now in rule of multiplication right so we have independent event and dependent event independent event means that event a and event b are totally independent not related dependent event means that a will depend on b or b will depend on uh, a right so means let's say uh, you are a you are event a you go to the one restaurant you eat there and then you tell your friend b right about the about the food in that restaurant so we want to measure what is the probability that b will go to the restaurant that is a simple example lah, on the dependent event so uh, this is a conditional probability where a and b are dependent so this is what we call uh, probability of a given b a given b means that a uh, b, uh, b is already happen already happen and we want to know this is uh, we want to know we want to know right so a is already happened we want to know what is the probability of b uh, sorry b is already happened we want to know what is the probability of a so this is a given b b is already happened we want to know probability of a so it's equal to probability of a in the side b divided by probability b where b is not equal to zero lah probability b should not equal to zero means that probability b b is already happened it must be some value right similarly we have probability of b given a probability of b given a means that a is already happened we are interested to study to know what is the probability of b given that a is already happened so it's equal to probability of a intersect b divided by probability of a where a is already happened there should be a value on probability of a right let's look at the example number nine right Example number 9, suppose that all students buying a certain brand of laptop. 60% includes a word processing program in their purchase. 40% include spreadsheet in their program. And 30% include both type of program, means word and spreadsheet. So given a selected student include spreadsheet program in his purchase, maksudnya P, we already include spreadsheet in the purchase. So we want to know what is the probability that word processing program was also included in the uh, uh, purchase. So the probability of W given spreadsheet. So this one should be probability of W intersect spreadsheet divided by probability of spreadsheet. So if you notice, uh, whenever uh, event already happened, it should be on denominator. Right? Event that already happened, it should be on denominator, right? Okay, so this one, we can see that probability of word is equal to 0 0.6, probability of S equal to 0 0.4, probability of both W and S equal to 0 0.3. So this one should be 0 0.3 divided by probability of 0 0.4. So it should be 0 0.75, right? So this is how we apply the conditional probability, right? Okay, I hope you understand. Right, uh, as I said just now, independent event, probability of A intersect B should be equal to probability of A multiplied with probability B. Right, so this is an example of independent event, but I think we have not enough time. We will, uh, I will leave it this example for you to practice. And if you have a question about this as a question, uh, example, so you can always uh, find me on my YouTube channel, my YouTube channel Muhammad Nasir Abdullah. You can search on YouTube and ask question on any. Uh, video I will reply there right 
So now let's look at uh, probability tree diagram. Probability tree diagram is a tree diagram. It is a probability diagram. We represent instead of uh, instead of uh, knowing the uh, know the numbers of the conditional probability and so on. So we try to illustrate in a tree diagram, right? So the probability tree diagram is to solve same probability problem. It shows all possible event in a graphical way and it is a way of showing the possible possibilities of two or more event. Right. So probability tree diagram, I believe uh, I think you if you notice this is a probability tree diagram. Lah. So we have three, let's say A, B, C, and then we have another event on A, B and C. Right. So we're going to draw like this. So let's say we look at example number 13. So do we have question? So I'm sure uh, organizers are recording this. So um, let's look at example number 13, right? So I just want to show you how, what is a tree diagram and how tree diagram works. So in a certain selection flower seed, we have two third uh, have been treated to improve germination and one third have been left untreated. So we have treat, we have treat uh, flowers and we have untreated flowers. Untreated flower, I put it as T complement. So two third is treat flower, untreated is one third. So this is how we draw a tree diagram. So seed we have that uh, which have been treated have the probability of germination 0 0.8. So in treated uh, tree, we have there are going to be two outcome, going to germinate or not going to germinate. So germination uh, 0 0.8 for treated, 0 0.2 is not going to germinate. Same goes to untreated. There are going to be two possible outcome, germinate or not germinate. So the untreated seed will probability of germination is 0 0.5, so a 50-50%. So this is the probability tree diagram. So we need to understand this is, uh, the two-third is the probability of T. This is probability of T complement. And this one, 0 0.8 will represent probability of G given that treated. This is probability of G complement given treated. And this is also same lah. Probability of G given untreated. Probability of G and not germinate going given untreated. So this is the value. This is a symbol. Right? So I hope you understand the probability tree diagram. Right? So this is an example. The same example as example number 13. You can practice by yourself. Right? Uh, so now let's look at the last topic. Right? I hope we have some uh, minutes to cover on Bayes theorem. Right? So uh, Bayes theorem, this is the last topic for today uh, for basic uh, probability. Bayes theorem is a key to almost any procedure for extracting information from data. Right? It let us to work backward from measured result to conclude what might cause them. So it's a basis for most model building and testing in statistics. So most of model building in statistics are based on Bayes theorem, such as a naive, naive Bayes, such as in uh, linear regression also use uh, Bayes theorem or many statistical model are uh, using Bayes theorem as a basis of uh, model building. Right, let's look at to understand Bayes theorem, first we need to understand this theorem. Right? Before we go to the Bayes theorem, we need to understand this theorem. So if we have event A1 until AK, constitute a partition of the sample space S, and the probability of AI is not equal to zero, means that every event has its own probability value. Right? So to find the probability of X, it should be equal to the multiplication of AI multiply with or, or what we call uh, in simple part, uh, I can put it. Uh, the the inter uh, we need to uh, we need to plus all the intersection with x, right? So let's make it uh, 
clear by illustration. So now let's look at this uh, uh, illustration. Let's imagine we have three district, right? Three district: district A one, district A two, and district A three. Right? To understand that pro, uh, that theorem, and in this area we have a big lake, right? This is a very big lake. Let let name the lake as X. If you can see district A. Uh, shared, uh, this uh, lake X uh, shared uh, in district A also have uh, lake X. D district uh, A2 also have a lake X. And lake, district A3 also have lake X. So if you want to find the probability of X, you need to find the, the intersection here. The intersection of, this is what we call, a1 intersect x, right? Another one is this is the area of in A2. This is A2 intersect x, and this is the area. Let's say I'm using uh, this one. Okay, this is the area of x. So this is A3 intersect x. So to find the value of x, we just need to add everything that intersect with x right so a1 intersect x a sorry uh, a2 intersect x and the last one a3 intersect x so when we plus everything that intersect with the x so we will get the value of x so this is what we uh, we the simplest way to understand this theorem right so basically they will go back to the conditional probability Right, so let's look at uh, example number 15. So, example number 15, I will conclude for Bayes' theorem. Uh, so, this is a Bayes' theorem, but I think this is too complex, right? The formula is too complex, but uh, I strongly suggest you to understand probability of A given B equal to probability of A intersect B divided by probability of B. So to understand Bayes theorem, you just need to understand the basic concept of conditional probability. Right. Let's look at the last question, example number fifteen. So, example number fifteen, I will conclude uh, everything uh, on uh, since uh, probability tree diagram until Bayes theorem. So let's look at this one. A counselor classify his student as excellent, fair, and poor based on the overall performance in their final examination. The excellent and fair student constitute of 10% and 30% of the students, respectively. So, let's move or work out with that, uh, that part first. Right. So, we have... Oops. So, we have uh, excellent student, poor student, and uh, fair student and poor student. We have three parts. So, excellent, I put it there as E, fair, F, poor, P. So, excellent and fair, 10 and 30. So, excellent is 10% or 0 0.1. Fair student, we have 0 0.3. And the balance is 0 point, 0 0.6, right? Because the total probability should be equal to 1. Right now, uh, let move out uh, on this one. Next question, next statement. The probability that student will score A for mathematics for excellent, fair, and poor are 0 0.6, 0 0.3, and 0 0.1. So there are two possibilities on each uh, student. So going to be going to score A or not going to score A. A or no A. A no A, right? So, uh, let's use this one. So, for excellent student, A is 0 0.6. The balance is 0 0.4. Next, next one, 0 0.3 for fair, 0 0.7 for uh, non-A, uh, non for poor, 0 0.1 uh, for uh, to get A, 0 0.9, no A. Right? So, this is how to draw a tree diagram for the above situation. So now, a second question, find the probability that student chosen at random 
is classified as fair student and will not score A for mathematics. So the second uh, question is asking probability of fair student and not score A for mathematics. Eh, sorry, will score A for mathematics. So this one should be, uh, if you can look at this one, um, the basic formula, probability of A given B equal to probability of A intersect B divided by probability B. Now, if you want to find probability of A intersect B, right? So it should be probability of B multiplied with probability of A given B. So this is a basic concept, right? So let's understand what happening in this tree diagram. So this one will represent probability of E. This one, probability of F. This is probability of P. And this one, probability of A given E. And this one, probability of A complement given E. And so on lah. So let's say kita nak tengok, we want to see about the uh, fair student and A. So we look at this part. Probability of A given F. So, this is 0 0.3, is it? 0 0.3 is probability of A given F. So, if you want to find probability of A given F, kita, let's say we expand this one. Right? Probability of A given F is probability of A intersect F divided by probability of F. So, if you want to find probability of A intersect F, it should be A intersect F should be probability of F Multiply with probability of A given F. So we just take the value 0 0.3 multiply with 0 0.3. So it should be 0 0.9. Is it? 0 0.3 multiply with 0 0.3. 0 0.09. Oops, where is my value? Right, so this is one of the uh, to to understand the basic uh, uh, tree diagram. Now let's look at the Bayes theorem part. So this is the second part. Right, so I hope I said I still have time to explain this one. So uh, let's look at the third question. Find the probability that student will chosen at random will score A for mathematics. So what we want to know here is. We want to know what is the probability of student getting A, right? So we want to know probability of A. So if we look at the three diagram here, we don't have the direct value of probability A, right? If you relate with the, this uh, example, if you want to find A, right? Let's say if you want to find X, you need to add every, every probability that intersect with X. Then you will get probability of X. So by looking at this one, you can see E also intersect with X, F also intersect with X, P also intersect with X. So we need to add every intersection with A. Eh, sorry, this one A. Eh? I, 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 I wrongly uh, put X. Uh, so this one should be probability of E intersect A plus probability of F intersect A plus probability of P intersect A. So this one should be 0 0.1 multiplied with 0 0.6, 0 0.1, multi sorry, I, I, 0 0.1 multiplied with 0 0.6 plus 0 0.3 multiplied with 0 0.3 plus 0 0.6 multiplied with 0. 1. So this one should be equal to uh, 0 0.21. Correct me if I'm wrong in calculation, but this method is correct. Right? So the last question. Right? A student did not score A for his mathematics subject. What is the probability that he is an excellent student? So this is come this is where the base theorem come, come in. So we are, are trying to work backward. So now, understand the equation. Probability of the student is not score A. So A complement. And we want to know 
what is the probability that he is from excellent group? So if you look at the tree diagram, there are no probability of E given A complement. Right? So we need to work backward. So this one should be probability of E intersect A complement divided by probability of A complement. So this one should be probability of E intersect A complement should be this one, right? 0 0.1 multiply with, oops, multiply with 0 0.4 divide by the A complement. So this is a probability of A. So 1 minus 0 0.21. So this one should be 0 0.05, right? So this is a, basically a Bayes theorem in in simple way, in simple way, right? So I just explaining the Bayes theorem in simple way. You no need to remember this uh, uh, theorem directly, but basically you need to remember this. Uh, you need to understand the theorem. But uh, if you have this kind of question, then uh, I think this is a very basic and direct uh, way to solve Bayes theorem. Right, so I'm going to leave you example number 16 and 17 for you to practice. Uh, basically, this example are same as example number 15. Right, so it's same concept. Right, you can you can practice by your, by yourself. Right, I think uh, since we ha I have very limited time, I think that's all, and I think I already covered. Do you have any questions so far? And uh, if you have any question, you can always uh, email me to nasir916 at uitm.edu.my or you can always go to my YouTube channel, right? Uh, YouTube channel and comment on any video, any my video, I will respond there. Okay, thank you, Pak. Thank you. This uh, attention, I think, will be useful for us. Thank you very much. Uh, be before we end, can I request uh, get, uh, to to get a group uh, picture? everyone uh sorry please open your cam we will take a photo together okay everyone okay thank you all uh, i have uh, thank you thank you very much yeah but i will take uh, some okay okay everyone uh fix one please open your cam okay thank you Okay, three, two, one. Okay, page two. Okay, thank you, page three. Okay, page four. Page five. Okay, six. Thank you, everyone, for coming to us today. Okay, Mr. Nasser, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, okay, right. My email address, Mr. Nine One Six. At so in my YouTube channel, wait, uh, I'm going to copy and paste the link. Right, so this is my YouTube channel. You can go to my YouTube channel, uh, subscribe. And if you have any question on uh, regarding this topic today, you can always uh, comment on any video that I have. So I will reply as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you Thank you very Thank you Thank you very much. Thank you this coming up. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah,